So it's time to start. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are, today, we are going about the enhancing cyber resilience with CIP and IEC 62443-4. Um, before we dive in, uh, let me introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Yoshitake Kobayashi, uh, CIP Technical Steering Committee Chair, and uh, he is Dinesh Kumar. Uh, he is a security working group for a CIP project. And here, uh, what we are talking about today, and we'll start at introduction of CIP and explore how CIP enhances cyber resilience. Uh, we'll also take a look into the CIP security working group and its uh, alignment with IEC 6443 standards. And by the end of these sessions, uh, I hope you have a clear idea of how CIP enhances and improves cyber resilience for your systems. Um, CIP uh, is uh, supported by industrial leaders. Our platinum members include Lunesas, Siemens, and Toshiba. And we also have several uh, members here. So each member brings their own expertise to our activities. And this diverse of membership helps CIP meet real world issues. All right, uh, let's introduce uh, CIP itself and also cyber, how CIP enhances cyber resilience. Uh, look around you. So Linux runs everywhere. Just think about trends you write here for today. And you are using a power grid um, by using electricity, something like that. So these kind of hidden infrastructure systems are already run on Linux. It's crucial to understand this because any issues of these systems directly affect our real life. Civil infrastructure faces uh, unique challenges. One of the most significant is uh, the extended life cycles of these systems. So let's look at this uh, blue and orange bars here. Uh, this orange box is the uh, kernel release timing. For example, uh, first uh, six items are released 2016. Then uh, we start the development for the uh, products. So once we release the products, uh, the length of the lines means the product life cycle. That is actual minimum product life cycles. So we try to use recent kernel as possible. However, uh, we still have a gap a lot. And this longevity introduces complex maintenance and security challenges for our lives. And another major concern is the increasing cybersecurity threats to these systems. Since around 2018, incidents in OT systems have nearly doubled each year. This is uh, not just a number. It means real threats to our power grid, transportation, and other critical infrastructures. We are difficult to explain when these threats and attacks will happen. So governments are already taking actions. We are already seeing some activities like EU Cyber Resilience Act and the US Executive Order of Improving Cybersecurity. So these activities are pushing industries to prioritize cyber resilience. So we still may have some time to align these kind of activities, but uh, it's clear to understand this is no longer optional. It's mandatory. So cyber resilience isn't just about preventing attacks. It's about creating systems that can anticipate threats, withstand attacks, recover quickly, and adapt. So think of it as a cycle. Prepare product 
uh, prepare, protect, detect, respond, and recover. So this holistic approach is key to maintain strong, secure systems in the face of future threats. This is where CIP comes in. Our mission is to establish open source base layer of industrial grade software for civil infrastructure systems. We are building foundation of secure, reliable, and long lasting infrastructure. So achieving this goal is not simple. We need to apply IoT concept to industrial systems while ensuring they meet strict requirements. We have to ensure quality and longevity for products that have decade-long life cycle. So keeping millions of connected systems secure, ensuring backward compatibility, and meeting various industrial standards such as reliability or safety and real-time capabilities, it's complex to balancing act. Our solution is open source base layer, like OSBL. This is a foundation on which companies can build their specific application on top of that. We provide CIP core packages and CIP long-term supported kernels. By offering this open source base layer, we enable developers and companies to create more resilient systems without have to re-embed the wheel. So using CIP OSBL in your company can reduce effort up to 70%, like uh, software maintenance and vulnerability monitoring and application adaptations. So CIP scope is comprehensive. It covers everything. But as you know, uh, we are currently this very small project. Uh, we prioritize uh, currently six key activities. The key activities uh, include uh, super long-term support at kernel with real-time support, and uh, offering a reference implementation at CIP core, and testing CIP software stacks, and aligning with cybersecurity standards that uh, explain later, and providing a safe and secure software update mechanisms. Uh, now, uh, let's dive into uh, how CIP specifically enhances cyber resilience. First, our long-term support model is a key element. We plan to provide 10 plus years maintenance period for our kernels and CIP core packages. This means the systems built on CIP can remain secure and up to date into the future, which is critical and crucial for the infrastructure with long life cycle. We are committed to using open source and upstream fast principles. This approach leverages the collective expertise of global open source community and leading to faster identification of vulnerabilities and more robust solutions. So our standardization efforts are another key activities. Our Open source base layer provides uh, the soft, uh, common software platform. Uh, we reduce compatibility issues and simplify integrations. So this is also supported by CIP testing. So let's look at some more ways uh, CIP enhances cyber resilience. So we integrate comprehensive security measure uh, mechanisms uh, aligned with IC62443 standards. So this is not just about checklist, it's about embedding security throughout the entire system lifecycle. Another critical aspect of our work is continuous monitoring and adaptation. 
So we provide uh, CV monitoring for the CIP kernel and CIP core packages. And we've also uh, incorporated and secure uh, software updates mechanism. So by combining uh, all these kind of elements, uh, long-term support and community driven improvements and standardization and comprehensive security integrations and uh, continuous monitoring and secure updates. So CIP provides a solid foundation for building and maintaining cyber resilience infrastructure systems. For more details um, and update for where we are now, um, I'll hand out to Dinesh. That's your time. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Susan. So uh, now onwards, uh, I will provide more details on specific elements where CIP is having uh, uh, various work groups, their activities, and uh, how we have worked as part of IC assessment activities. So those activities and technical capabilities uh, provided by CIP will help uh, CIP users to increase the cyber resilience in their end products. So as already explained by Yossi San, there are uh, basic pillars uh, for cyber resilient systems. And these are identity, uh, protect, detect, uh, respond, uh, recover. So these are not new terms in cybersecurity. Basically, we are going to see the details. How are these important uh, pillars, basically important functions are uh, required for any system uh, to remain secure? in their life cycle and respond to you know, security uh, incidents. So how uh, we work in CIP and uh, uh, we provide the uh, required capabilities and processes in CIP. So uh, first, uh, first of all, basically, as recently we have completed uh, in CIP IEC 6243-4-1 uh, uh, assessment. So as part of uh, this assessment, uh, what we have done is basically we work to identify the gaps in the CIP development processes and whatever required in 4-1 uh, in IC standard. So we try to come up for uh, secure development processes and that we have already uh, recently completed. And this is, these are the important uh, secure development process areas where uh, uh, basically, we have come up with uh, processes, guidelines, and uh, identified the gaps. And uh, we will see uh, there are certain practices because CIP is a platform, so we could uh, we could not meet them. And uh, they are like uh, the important ones are secure implementation, security by design, management of security related issues, uh, and uh, verification of uh, validation of. Uh, uh, and uh, security management practices and security update management. So these are important practices uh, in uh, IEC 6244-4-1. And we will see how can we map these practices to uh, a cyber resilient system and how do we uh, achieve and practice this in CIP. So if we talk about identify and protect, so in uh, 4-1 IEC standard, we have requirements for uh, doing uh, identification and authentication of human user processes, any software processes. Before any process or user connects to any system component, it has to be uh, identified, it has to be authenticated before allowing any kind of operation. And in CIP, we have identified the required security packages and we have added those packages in our layer as just now explained in first part of this session called OSBL. So now CIP has a OSBL layer which has a IEC layer and in that we have added these packages which helps us to uh, meet this requirement. And then uh, you can see software process, device authentication, uh, identif uh, identifier management, account management, so all these uh, required security practices uh, for a cyber resilient systems, they have been added in CIP uh, IC layer. 
and the next one is detect respond and recover so they are also uh, again mapped to uh, the requirement of ic 62 uh, 4-1 uh, so here we can see uh, uh, this 4 dash one requires doing a threat modeling and making it as a mandatory process uh, for new components or third party components or existing components assessment of third party components uh, for doing uh, uh, risk assessment uh, what kind of uh, security development process are followed for their development and then uh, development environment security uh, uh, practices to make sure the development environment is secured enough and then CV scanning and provide, uh, providing regular fixes for security issues as well as continuous monitoring and audit logs as well as, as, well as control system backup and restore. So these are the uh, 4-1 requirements which in CIP we have created uh, processes for doing threat modeling and we have, we have already created threat model for existing processes and added technical capabilities like uh, audit the uh, package support and uh, uh, we have also uh, we will see in uh, further slides how do we uh, do CV scanning, how do we provide uh, uh, CV reports uh, on regular basis. So one of the important component of building images is to make sure the images and our repositories are secure enough and the images created uh, by using the CIP repo uh, repositories they are reproducible. So CIP has been working with reproducible build uh, community and uh, we have made sure that our majority of the images are reproducible. So currently CAMO, AMD64, ARM64 and ARMHF based images are already reproducible and we are working further to make all the supported images in CIP reproducible. So like next uh, Beagle 1 black based and X86 uh, generic images and then uh, other CIP supported reference hardware images also will be reproducible and we are working uh, uh, like uh, we are working with reproducible community, uh, community to make sure that we also uh, contribute for fixing the issues and uh, uh, we regularly basically uh, share our updates and we receive updates from uh, reproducible build community so that our images are uh, uh, reproducible. And the next one basically in 4-1 as part of 4-1 uh, assessment uh, when we worked so uh, there are uh, about 54 requirements and in that when we did uh, detailed gap, anal gap analysis and investigation and we found uh, in CIP we can meet most of the secure development practices. So we can see uh, about uh, more than 90% requirements we can meet and there are still few requirements which we cannot meet because uh, we are a platform and these requirements are very specific to end product. So you can see certain uh, secure development uh, uh, processes like uh, custom uh, developed uh, components uh, from third party as we don't use them and doing a secure design best practices because uh, there is as of now no uh, basic control in place for open source component development. However, at our integration level we have uh, done this analysis. <coughs> then defense in depth, uh, design in deployment. So this is again a product specific penetration testing and uh, secure disposal uh, guidelines. So these are again uh, product specific uh, development pra practices which we have not achieved in CIP but otherwise yeah all the other requirements uh, have been met and now we are uh, going to further uh, incorporate these practices and uh, build CIP images on top of that. And this is the uh, certification we have received recently for 4-1 uh, assessment. And uh, during our uh, gap assessment when we worked for CIP, we also identified there are a few challenges in open source community and open source components which are uh, difficult to address uh, just by reusing open source processes. So for example, there are certain requirements to uh, track to closure security issues. So even though many open source components have their own repositories and they track uh, certain issues. Uh, however, still uh, for example in Linux kernel we do not have a central place to track all the issues uh, and its life cycle 
and then we don't have a common secure guideline, uh, a secure guideline kind of uh, uh, framework or practices which we can say okay all the uh, components can follow that and then again secure design principle. So these are some of the components which we identified uh, for secure development process where uh, open source community has to work and uh, address these kind of uh, elements so that it will be more compliant to uh, security standards. Then uh, next when we started working to understand uh, the currently installed packages on CIP security images, how many packages have uh, test cases and uh, test already available and how many tests are not covered by any of the uh, test in upstream or in Debian salsa. So uh, we can see uh, the uh, uh, more than 50 percent uh, test uh, packages, basically packages have Debian CA test shells. So it means those uh, packages are regularly tested and the test shells are already available as part of Debian CA. And about uh, uh, 34 percent packages we can see they have upstream test available, however with they do not have uh, Debian CA reels uh, available. And similarly, there are few locally built packages, they are uh, very small packages just for creating metadata and recipes and all, they are not mostly functional packages. And there are uh, a small percentage of packages having no test, uh, about 7 percent. So those packages do not have any test in upstream or Debian CI. So as part of CIP uh, when we investigated uh, this data, so we started working on identifying and uh, trying to address, trying to add uh, uh, packages. So now as a first step what we are doing, we are working to add auto package test for packages which do not have uh, auto package test though they have uh, uh, test in uh, upstream. And then uh, in parallel we have also started communication with respective maintainers so that we can work with the upstream maintainers, we can contribute with them and find ways to so that uh, all the packages which we are installing in our basic reference images, they all are tested, we have the test evidence available for them. And uh, after completing 4-1, next we are working for 4-2 uh, compliance. So for that uh, first step is to uh, uh, do the SVB testing and this SVB testing basically it has uh, multiple, of, uh, multiple types of testing which includes functional testing, security testing, penetration testing and vulnerability testing. So we have started working for this and uh, we are identifying the uh, what uh, specific requirements which we have to meet. So already in CIP we do lot of testing as part of CIP kernel test as well as uh, we have a IEC layer uh, as part of OSBL layer and that we are testing. Now we will uh, work with certification body to understand the gaps and uh, fill them. And uh, then as part of CIP, like in CIP we support uh, software update functionality uh, since very long time and uh, for that basically uh, this is just a mapping to understand why uh, software update is important uh, from a cyber resilient uh, system perspective. So basically it uh, helps in many different ways. Uh, like vulnerability management, rapid response to threats, adaptability. So these are the components which are uh, important and they can be addressed by doing a, a regular, regular uh, security uh, and uh, other updates. So uh, recently maybe about uh, yeah, a year back we also started working with uh, TUF and uh, WFX uh, community. So this stuff and uh, WFX basically they add additional security layers in existing software update uh, framework. So our basic software update framework is uh, SW update uh, which is very commonly used in embedded systems. Uh, but uh, when we had uh, more discussion with the uh, tough and sub, uh, WFX community, we uh, thought to okay uh, let's, uh, let's understand the additional security provided by TUF and uh, WFX and how can we integrate this in CIP and uh, uh, identify the gaps in existing uh, features of software update framework. 
and then we started working on this. So we have a uh, basically demo available in OSS uh, Japan uh, for this specific functionality. So we have uh, did, we have done the integration of uh, WFX and TUF with software update in our uh, basic reference images. So this work is uh, sort of in progress currently and uh, soon uh, it will be available as part of our CIP reference images. So uh, the important uh, features which are uh, added or supported by CIP software update is uh, basically delta update, uh, complete software update uh, and signed images. And uh, IEC also has a requirement for supporting signed and encrypted images. So basically tough framework specifically addresses uh, key rotation and secure delivery of artifacts from uh, server to the end devices. And yeah, this uh, work basically currently in progress and soon we will be merging all these changes in our main repositories. Uh, during our uh, IEC activities, we have created comprehensive documentation which is available in our GitLab repositories. So anyone can refer it and uh, this is basically to uh, address all the IEC requirements and uh, it it uh, basically explains in detail about each requirement and in how CIP we are meeting those requirements what uh, specific actions have been taken. Uh, for each requirement of 4S1 and 4S2 uh, we have created this but for 4S2 now currently we are uh, working with a certification body to uh, revise them, update them for the identified gaps. So. Uh, Another important topic is CVE handling. Uh, this is also a uh, uh, very strict requirement for a cyber resilient system as well as IC. So uh, as uh, in CIP, uh, there are mainly two components, CIP kernel and CIP core. So CIP kernel workgroup has uh, uh, basically separate repository where they are having their uh, tools which are specifically used uh, to identify uh, report and identify new and fixed uh, CVEs for the specific uh, uh, kernel configs and the uh, devices supported by CIP and they are uh, weekly or bi-weekly they are regularly uh, shared in CIP uh, development uh, mailing list. And CIP core work group uh, provides uh, certain tools. So as we can see those tools uh, basically use the Debian uh, CV scanner tool Debsecan and using this tool users can generate their uh, generate a CV list based on the end product and the list of packages installed on their reference images. So this is how in CIP we are handling CV part and again uh, uh, as recently uh, kernel workgroup members reported there is a huge influx of CVs uh, due to uh, some region and uh, so manually reviewing all the CVEs and making them as report is becoming quite difficult. So that's why they have identified to, uh, they are working basically to automate this process and probably soon we will have uh, certain tools uh, available as part of CIP kernel uh, repository which can be used to automate this process, basically filtering CVEs which are relevant and specific to the uh, kernel features. So yeah, in all the components which we uh, use in CIP, they are basically uh, not modified. They are mostly used as it is. So this is just uh, uh, to mention that since we are not modifying any existing components, so uh, for some of the parts we uh, don't do uh, detailed analysis in, term, in terms of uh, uh, security. So uh, the important point is like uh, many uh, uh, CIP users and in general people ask what are the benefits uh, of CIP compliance and what was the key objective uh, for selecting IC standard for compliance. So basically the idea was that uh, when a platform becomes uh, compliant to IC standards, so the end product based on the platform can leverage the benefit basically significantly it can reduce the compliance effort as well as uh, CIP users can uh, focus mainly on 
uh, the delta or the differences or the additional fe features they are adding which are product specific or use case specific and uh, the generic features or let us say base uh, kernel or base uh, root file system which are already being compliant to IC uh, requirements is uh, guaranteed by CIP community and that itself is a uh, great benefit, benefit because CIP is, uh, IC itself is quite extensive standard which has uh, many many requirements and by reusing a CIP as based platform for the end product it can reduce effort as well as cost and since CIP uh, supports long term support for both a CIP kernel as well as a selected uh, packages. So, that benefit can all uh, already uh, leveraged can be leveraged by CIP uh, users. So, that is why the work uh, being done in CIP is quite important for CIP users and uh, this is going to be a continuous work because this requires certain uh, compliance or certain uh, follow up of uh, secure development processes by all the uh, uh, CIP work group members. So, yeah, these are some of the important benefits. And if we compare CIP uh, with the uh, other distributions, so there are quite distinguishing features or benefits, uh, I would say, like uh, we have a dedicated kernel maintainers team and they are very actively releasing multiple kernels working parallel parallelly on uh, multiple versions of kernel as uh, the support is for 10 plus years and uh, uh, we have a IEC ready platform which can be uh, reused by CAP users and close monitoring of CVs as already explained is also uh, quite uh, helpful. And extended support for some of the uh, Debian ELTS packages, this is also something for that uh, CIP work with the uh, uh, open source community and spend some money uh, for getting the extended support for important packages. As well as we do a regular automated testing uh, and test results are published in kernel CI, they are available and uh, there are uh, multiple uh, players multiple CIP member companies and of course that list is uh, growing. So, these are multiple benefits of uh, uh, CIP uh, distribution. So, I think uh, that is all part of my session. I will hand over to Yoshi. All right. Thank you. And as we wrap up here, uh, let us quickly recap the, uh, how CIP enhances cyber resilience. So, as Dinesh explained, uh, we provide IEC 62443-4-X compliant platform with long term support and, constant, and constantly updating with the latest security updates. So, by engaging uh, this, uh, with multiple open source projects uh, like Kernel CI, Reproduce Build Builds, and Debian, uh, we tap into global expertise, which benefits both CIP and also the wider community. So, remember, uh, this uh, collaboration is the key to ensure uh, cyber resilience. And here is uh, uh, some talks uh, during the Open Source Summit Japan here. And we, uh, including our talk, uh, we have three sessions. And the first one is already passed in, uh, at the noon. And, uh, um, yeah. Uh, that's presented by uh, Motai san uh, from Cybertrust and how uh, we should do uh, for the current ecosystems. And tomorrow uh, we have sessions about the uh, Delta uh, the secure software update mechanisms, uh, which presented by uh, Kosh from Toshiba. So uh, if you have a, uh, time, uh, please take a look for these sessions and from uh, here or maybe YouTube. And we also have a demo booth here in, in exhibit area. Uh, we have three demos available that. And the first one is IoT sensors and software update and low power. Uh, yeah. And this actually running on top of the CIP uh, base layer. And if you are interested in uh, our activities, uh, please consider to join us for our efforts. Uh, you can uh, just scan this QR code and yeah, see what we are doing there. 
So uh, to stay in the loop, uh, please join our mailing list at CIP Dev. Uh, also uh, follow us on X and check out our website. So we have uh, plenty of contents uh, on the website, including IC6443 uh, standard activities. So for access uh, or source codes, uh, please also uh, go to the GitLab. So we think we covered uh, all today, and now it's your turn. Questions? Yeah, please wait. Hi, my name is Johannes. Thanks for the talk. Uh, on one of your first slides, you had this idea of having this base layer of packages that are mostly important, and you mm -hmm. said that there are tens of packages in there. And the number seems very low to me, especially since you had things like multi-factor authentication that are probably part of this core package or core layer. Um, can you share the exact number? I would expect like more hundreds of packages instead of tens. Yeah, so can I? Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, for your question. So basically, uh, here the question is, uh, in our reference slides here, we are showing, uh, as an example, the CIP core uh, can have tens of packages. So this is yeah, just an example, but actually, when we recently investigated in our security image, so there are 142 packages being installed. And uh, as I shown some uh, data, so as of now, certain packages have tests available in Debian CI, certain have only upstream tests. Yeah, so to answer your question, there are 142 uh, packages being installed currently on our reference images. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And any other questions? All right, I think uh, it's time for uh, to close my presentation. Thank you very much for joining and uh, joining for discussion. Thank you. Thank you.